this time with feeling. <sighs> Tried to start streaming twice now. And I just fucked it up. Anyway. In case anyone's actually tuned in. Because I, I thought this would tell me that uh, I had people in the chat. But I guess not. If you're there, please say hello. Don't make me the crazy person that's talking to myself. <laughs> um... So I have ideas. They're usually not very good ideas, but some ideas I don't mind. I don't mind all that much. This is one of them. Order of Dragon's Bane. I created it because the way I understand Blood Hunters, uh, Blood Hunter orders is. They pick a creature type, and they kill it. So I was like, there's nothing about dragon slaying in Matt's official stuff. So, and, and um, if you actually watched, like, the first two of my Halloween character creation streams uh which are on youtube under the same name as my twitch go check them out if you want i've also got a bunch of gaming crap on there it's mostly just randomness and incomplete series because motivation loss because i'm just talking to myself i want to get better at it i promise i want to get better at it but i am a depressive bastard Anywho. Blood hunters. They, they pick a thing and they kill it. Order a dragon's bane. This is the second blood hunter that I made. The first one, which I think I showed off a little bit of in my first two Halloween character creation streams, talking in circles now, is Order of Bloodletting, which was basically meant to be a vampire hunter. This is meant to be a dragon slayer. So what I have is, come on, load up. There you go. What I have is Blood Curse of Rupturing at third level when you join this order. You learn Blood Curse of Rupturing. Blood Curse of Rupturing, when a creature within 60 feet of you attempts to use an internally generated ability such as a breath weapon, administer venom, roar, or scream, Cast a spell without with vocal components, or a bodily reaction occurs like a Venom Troll's Poison Splash. You can use your reaction to mitigate the damage. The creature makes a con save. On a fail, it takes 2d8 necrotic damage, and the damage from the ability is halved before any saving throws occur. On success, they take half damage, and, de and they deal... The damage they deal with their ability is only reduced by, reduced by the necrotic damage dealt. If you amplify it, the curse prevents the use of the ability. The use of... And ability to recharge... I need, to, I need to fucking make a better wording for this. The curse prevents the use of and ability to re, an ability to recharge the ability for 1d6 turns. Eh. Ability to recharge the ability. Let's just call it attack because that... I don't know. That makes me feel better now. Reading it out loud, that makes me feel better. But yeah, this is like, best way to stop a dragon, turn off its fire, or lightning, or poison, or what have you. So I was like, huh, rupture the flame sack, or poison sack, 
or whatever the hell organ it is that they produce the flame from uh, the the breath weapon from as it's generating the stuff and it'll make it fuck it up that was the idea behind this and then it do and then like i say in the first sentence of it like if a scorpion goes to sting you and you have to make a con save against its poison rupture its poison sack and the poison gets all messed up and doesn't do as much um roar scream came because i was i looked at sphinx uh, because i saw sphinxes as i was looking through what i should what i should pick or what i should phrase this like so it's like ah! you rupture its vocal cords and then it can't roar or scream as well same thing with casting a spell of vocal components you can use this on a human or a dragon or whatever if the spell contains a vocal component they just like break their vocal cords for a little bit meow you come here kitty meow you come up yeah tell me again uh and then bodily reaction uh I couldn't think of a, uh, another creature that did it. I know I'm I'm sure there is, and I actually I know there is, but I I still can't think of it. But like a venom troll, when you hit it, it bleeds poison on you. I was like, okay, you can also stop that. Hello, kitty. I need to be able to see my screen, though, please. So, yeah, that is Blood Curse of Rupturing. Next one. Inured to the Flames. Third level, when you join the Order, you gain resistance to either Fire, Cold, Lightning, Acid, Poison, or Radiant. The reason I have Radiant included in this is in is in my game, if I ever wind up running it, gold dragons don't breathe fire, they shoot Radiant light breath. Yeah. Because I, I, th I always thought that was weird. Uh, like, you've got... Uh, you've got... Uh, fire, cold, lightning, acid, and poison on the chromatic side, but then you have fire, fire, cold, lightning, acid, uh, cold, lightning, acid. So I'm like, all right, let's balance out the metallics a little bit. So now, gold dragons breathe holy light, so that it, you know, it's not. Two kinds of dragons breathing fire. Uh, anyways, during short rest, you can change which damage type you resist by reducing your maximum hit points by two. I just pick. I just picked a. I just picked a random number. I could have gone by five. I could have said like by five. I don't know if that would make it more balanced or not. But I felt like you know, just at a short rest, you fuck it. I don't know. Cut yourself and then fucking you suddenly resist lightning instead of fire. Um, but you know you you get why I did this. It's so you can be like, okay, that dragon breathes fire. Uh, let me let me go cut myself real quick. Slit and now I resist fire. Cause you know you're a dragon slayer. You're gonna want to be prepared against whatever the hell the dragon breathes and when you finish a long rest you can choose a new resistance without depleting your maximum hit points and it's just like yeah uh 
that's ner that's the two third level features at seventh level you get the hey Dan. hey Dan. please thank you you get the right of dragon's bane the namesake of the order seventh level you learn the esoteric right right of dragon's bane detail below the right damage is force type because as far as I know, no dragon resists force type. If you hit a dragon creature with your right of dragon's bane, it suff suff suffles. suffers uh, additional force damage equal to twice your wisdom modifier. Copy-paste of right of the dawn, but rather than just buy your wisdom modifier, it's twice your wisdom modifier because dragon's got a lot of hit points. And then at uh, at eleventh level, any creature you attack while the right is active receives wisdom modifier force damage, not twice wisdom modifier, but just wisdom modifier. Literally just a copy paste with a couple words changed from right of dawn from ghost slayer. And 11th level is Shatter the Scales. I don't know if that, this is another one where I'm like, should I make this the 15th level or should I just leave this as 11th? I feel like this is a decent thing for 11th level. But anyway, Shatter the Scales is at 11th level, you strike with enough force to break a creature's natural armor. When you hit a creature that has natural armor with a melee weapon attack, and your right of dragon's bane is active you can use your blood maledict to have the creature make a con save dragons make it at disadvantage on a fail its ac is lowered by 1d6 to a minimum of 10. i feel like it's a good enough restriction that the creature has to have natural armor i may just I think I'm gonna get rid of this because, like, you, you fucking slap your right of dragon's brain onto a ballista, you fire the ballista at a dragon, and it, you break its scales. Like Lord of the Rings, or was it The Hobbit? I don't I think it was The Hobbit, where they had that ballista in town and they shot it at Smog, and it was the only thing that could pierce a dragon's scales. Yeah. Anyway, so I figure I figure this is a good this is a good thing for, you know, a dragon hunter because like things got a lot of HP and it's got a lot of armor. So you would so as someone who is adept at taking a essentially taking apart Cert a certain creature such as a dragon you nullify its deadliest its potentially deadliest weapon you resist its potentially deadliest weapon you deal more damage to it through your um, crimson right and you know how and you learn how to essentially strip it of its armor so that you can make it easier to hit i think for a hunter of be of a of dragons this is a decent ability whether i should make it a later level thing or keep it at 11th i don't know for now i'm going to keep it at 11th This is the part where I need help figuring shit out. Because at 15th level, 
I'm I am out of ideas at this point. I I well, okay, I'm not completely out of ideas. There is something I want to do, but I think it's I don't I honestly don't know actually. For 15th level, I honestly don't know. I may look up... And I'm sure this is a dumb idea, but, like, natural enemies of dragons is just going to be, like, other dragons and humans. I doubt there's going to be anything like, oh, for some reason a dragon is naturally hunted by pixies or some shit. Because, ha <laughs> ha uh, Pokemon. Fairy type. <laughs> uh, so let's see. What's, what's another common... What is a common thing for blood hunters at this level? Uh, Ghost Slayer. See through magical darkness and see invisible creatures. Okay. When your willpower resist urges of your lycanthropic curse, make a wisdom save to maintain control with advantage. And you gain pack tactics. Okay. Uh, let's go to the mutant. Oh, it skipped over it. Whoops. Don't do stuff. Oh. Advanced mutagen craft. You take a sh Oh, you get two at- You get two at this one? Oh, fuck. That's way too much. Uh, your body begun to adapt to toxins and venoms, ignoring corroding effects. Immunity to poison damage and condition. And poison condition. And when you take a short rest to concoct a mu mutagen. Fucking Christ, I can speak, I swear. You now make three. They must be different formulas and can be ingested with overlapping effects that last until you finish your short next rest. Each mutagen, mutagen fucking God. Still takes separate bonus action to imbibe. And Propane Soul, which is really just Warlock. Uh, third, seven. I got two at seven. What the fuck? And this is just a spell. So Ghost Slayer gets Ghost and Ghost Slayer gets a sense. Lycan gets control over its curse. Mutant gets immunity to poison and the and the poison condition. And Profane Soul gets a spell. I did give a spell and a modified version of a spe of the spell to my vampire hunter blood hunter <sighs> What should I do for 15th level? So it's Ghost Slayer had a sense. 
Lycan had control over transformation. Mutant got immunity to poison. I'm not giving it immunity to... I'm not... That is way too strong. That, that I feel like, would be a better 18th level thing. Is to be like, hey, you're immune to this type. And when you... Yeah. But that's still... Immunity to fire, cold, lightning... Po it, it's... It'd be too strong, if you ask me. Poison poisoned, and gains a spell. Have an I have an idea. Ding. Oh, that's a really bad idea. Points if you get the reference. Um. So I had an idea. Something I need to look up more so though. Is <sighs> survive the imbibing of Hunter's Bane. Poisonous alchemical concoction alters your blood. Hi, hi, the puppies. You need to go outside. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna step away for a minute. Let the dog out. Hopefully she doesn't take forever because she likes to go on her. Ooh. Careful, crazy. Hi, hi. You, you are fucking nuts. I'll be back. I'm going to make sure she doesn't take her long walk. Because she's got a big yard to sniff around, but I'm trying to do this.
Just remembered, I do need to rem I need to fucking establish a transition somehow. I don't know how I do that. We'll look it up later. I'm gonna I'm just gonna make a note somewhere because I'm gonna forget otherwise. <laughs> I have returned. <sighs> Survived imbibing of Hunter's Bane, poisonous alchemical concoction that alters your blood. Here's the thing. You start out having somehow ingested, according to this, somehow ingested a poisonous alchemical concoction. Mutant focuses on making further concoctions. Would it be too far-fetched to say... Would it be too far-fetched to say that other orders can also create certain formulas? Because every blood hunter has somehow cre uh, somehow taken in the hunter's bane. Mutant is the only one that really focuses on more of them. My idea is <sighs> My idea is essentially you learn how to create potions of dragon's breath. It's honestly kind of dumb. But it's the only thing I've got to go off right now. For a 15th level ability, that sounds kind of dumb. Let me look at Bloodhunter orders. Handful of secret orders of Bloodhunters guard cryptic techniques and blasphemous rituals. One must adhere to these orders to even be granted access to the Hunter's Bane right that starts their journey and only once they've proven their ability with uh, their ability will the secrets of the order begin to be revealed some even wait a few years before they are sure they want to continue down this cursed path either or it's within these small enigmatic sects that the real power of a blood hunter is learned I have an idea. I have a new idea. The problem is I don't know exactly a good way to execute it. If 
essentially all it is is gaining a breath weapon. The other thing I want, I was, um, the main thing I'm thinking of is just a spell similar to a dragon's breath weapon. So, cloud kill for a green dragon, um, vitriolic sphere for black or copper dragon, uh, fuck. Burning hands at fifth level for red and brass. I don't know. Cone of cold, obviously, for silver and white. Huh. <sighs> Need to figure out something for this. Gain a breath weapon. One thing I was thinking I could do is just be like you gain dragon scale, you start growing dragon scales. So that your armor class increases, but yeah, Whew. but as a 15th level thing, that just sounds kind of weak. Because I've already got resistance built into the class. I've got more damage against dragons. I've got a way to strip. I've got a way to strip. Creatures of natural defense. feel like I need to do something relating to fear because dragons have that fearful presence or frightful presence however whatever the actual wordage is but at 15th level that's kind of weak Another thing is like somehow being able to, I don't know, sense a dragon's horde, not necessarily sense a dragon's horde, but like Ooh, hold up. Bay fiends and undead. Dragons are not included in this. 
New plan. No, 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 new plan. We are making Shattering Scales the 15th level thing. Or Shatter the Scales. Blood Hunter's been kind of all over the place with, with um, gains. So, Ghost Slayer gets 1 3rd level, 1 7th level, 1 11th level, 1 15th level, and 1 18th level. That's semi, -nor that's semi normal. Order of the Lycan gets 1 2 3rd levels, 1 7th level, 1 11th, 1 15th, 1 18th. Normal. Mutant gets two third levels, a seventh level, an eleventh level, two fifteenth levels, and an eighth level, and an eighteenth level. Profane Soul gets a third level. A second third level but really it's all combined into one because it's warlock patron which grants you magic a third <coughs> <coughs> technically it's a third third level but really it's just mm, It gets two seventh levels. An eleventh, a fifteenth, and an eighteenth. So I'm gonna say that I can give Blood Hunter or uh, Order of Dragon's Bane anyway, multiple of these. Rather than just third levels, because normally, normal classes, like, if they get multiple things, it's at third level. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to move Shattered the Scales to... Hmm... No. Damn it. I think the way I want to do this is I want to move Blood Curse of Rupturing to set... No. Maybe. 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 Be really weak for four-ish levels if I do what I want to do. What if? Because here's what I'm thinking. Dragon Tracking dragons is not included in the Hunter's Bane thing. Description. Add that at third level. Somehow add tracking dragons at third level. I feel like Blood Curse of Rupturing would be pretty good at seventh level. So we'll move that to seventh. So it's a second seventh level. 
because really what it does because not thinking about it can't uh, essentially canceling a breath weapon venom roars and screams and can and essentially counter spelling that's pretty strong so yeah i think we're gonna we're just gonna move rupturing to seventh level Add class feature. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to call it. However, I also realize I just I just realized I need to change the wording in <clears throat> Blood Curse of Rupturing. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my fucking background noise. Uh, <clears throat> when you join this order, Third level, when you join this order as part of the Hunter's Bane feature, you also have advantage on Wisdom Survival Check to track dragons, as well as on, uh, on intelligence checks to recall information about them. If you are actively tracking... If you are actively tracking a dragon, you cannot be surprised by... one you can only be tracking one type of creature at a time sure i could just fucking delete all that and say you add dragon uh, you add dragons to the list of creatures you can track with hunter's bane i'm going to do that now I wish I'd have typed that out as I said it, because now I've, I'm already fucking goldfish braining. <laughs> when you join this order as part of the Hunter's Pain feature, you may also... Let me 
also add Third level, when you join this order, you may also add dragons to the list of creatures included I think that may, I feel like that makes sense. When you join the order, you may also add dragons to the list of creatures included as part of them. Additionally, while in a dragon's lair, you have advantage on stealth checks made to hide from them. Drawing somewhat from The Hobbit, where he hid in Smog's fucking room. Obviously, Smog found him, but dude still made it into his into his inner sanctum. So like. I don't know. Get it out of the way. Third level thing. <laughs> uh, I, just, <laughs> I just had another idea that I could add here. And you can move it to normal page while stealth. I don't care if it's not part of the dictionary. It's a thing. Well, in Dragon Slayer, you have advantage on stealth checks made to hide from them, and you can move it to normal page while stealth. And that maybe, maybe not. The original thing that I, uh, before I actually typed that out, was, uh, <clears throat> uh, you are not slowed by difficult terrain created by hordes of treasure. <laughs> but I don't think that's ever actually been a thing. It'd be it'd be a funny little bit of flavor. Mm. I can honestly say I'm not entirely sure. I think we'll just leave it at advantage on stealth while in a dragon's lair.
Maybe we'll just leave it at that. Quam. Level 3. Create feature. The only thing I can really think to call it would be Dragon Hunter. That's just kind of dumb. It sounds really dumb in my head. Invade the lair? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds really dumb to me, but fuck it. I, I got no better idea. Dragon Hunter's just too plain. So, now we have... <clears throat> Invade the Lair and Inert to Flames. Blood Curse of Rupturing. Before I forget, I need to change it. Okay. So now at seventh, you both you get an esoteric right and a blood curse. Inert the flames, invade the lair. Invade the lair, inert the flames, blood curse of rupturing. Right of dragon's bane. I need to make fourth. I can't believe I've spent an hour putzing around on this already. Fourth, make Shadow to Scales fifth. And then fifteenth. This one seventh. Third. And now we're back to square one of what the flying fuck do I do for fifteenth level? <laughs> Invade the lair, inert to flame with blood curse of rupturing, right of dragon's bane, shatter the scales. Blank and blank. Oh, wait a minute. I'm remembering an idea I had before. I'm remembering an idea I had before. Stealing a little bit from uh, Draconic Sorcerer. He 
Yeah. 15th level. Gain wings. <gasps> Done. Submit. Because <clears throat> that's another thing. Is like, okay. You've stopped its breath weapon. You're damaging it more. You've stripped it of its scales. Next, uh, it's going to try and fly away. Prevent flight. Or keep up or attempt to keep up with it do i just make it another blood curse and just be like when a creature takes when a creature with a fly speed takes a disengage or dash action use reaction and blood maledict to Well, no, because Bloodhunters already have a blood curse like that. Where it's, uh, you cut, you completely stop them. You reduce their speed to zero, right? Yeah, blood curse of binding. Bonus action, bind an enemy no, uh, no more than one size larger than you. <clears throat> However, if you amplify it, you can affect the creature regardless of size. And you just reduce their speed to zero. So that's already there. So the ability to escape, you're gonna wanna take you're gonna want to take Blood Curse of Binding. <clears throat> I have an idea for 18th level. So I'm going to work on that one. Oh. Okay, changes. Dragon Bane. I feel like this would be a blood curse. It's definitely not a crimson right. If anything, it would be a blood curse. However, for a dragon slayer, That, mm, at this point, what I said before of what are a dragon's natural enemies, other dragons and humans. And then there's the whole thing of fight fire with fire. What if I made a blood curse that essentially allowed you to dominate a dragon? <clears throat> no fucking clue how that would work. I know that there is such a th and there is a spell called Dominate Monster. This is not a pre uh, predominantly spellcastery class, like in the traditional like actual spell list class, unless you take the Profane Soul. So. <clears throat> I like the name of it. I, I like this name now. Blood Curse of Tyranny.
<clears throat> you attempt to bind a creature to your will by controlling the blood in its brain. As an action while using your blood maledict. How how is that phrased again? Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I was looking for... I was looking for the other thing. My bad. Right? Let's do this. Action while using Blood Maledict. <clears throat> How do I want to phrase this? Because I want it to say the creature must be the creature must be near death in order to uh, <clears throat> You attempt to bind a dying creature to your will by exploiting its exhaustion. You learn the blood curse of tyranny as an action while using your blood maledict. Here, I got I got it, I got it. <clears throat> No, hold on. Backtracking on the wording. When a creature you can see when a creature you can see is below one third of its max health. Here we go.
When a creature you can see is below one-third of its maximum hit points, you can use your, your Blood Maledict as an action. How does Dominate Monster work? Because essentially that is what this is, is Dominate Monster. Dominate Ram. Dominate Monster. Wisdom saving throw will be turned by you for the duration of the creature's use from when you're fighting the enemy damage. When the creature is charmed, you have a telepathic link with it. As long as the two of you are on the same plane of existence, you can use this telepathic link to issue commands to the creature while you are conscious. No action required, which it does its best to obey. You can specify a single. Whew. A simple and general course of action such as attack, insert creature, run there, fetch that object. If the creature completes the order and doesn't receive further direction from you, it defends and preserves itself to its best of its ability. Use your action to take total and precise control of the target until the end of your next turn. creature on takes only the actions you choose and doesn't do anything that you don't allow it to do. During this time, you can also cause the creature to use a, a reaction, but this requires you to use your own reaction. Each time the target takes damage, it makes a new wisdom save against the spell. So it just says any creature. Right? So does that mean that Dominate Monster would work on humanoids? Because they are technically creatures. It doesn't say... It just says a creature. It does not specifically have to be like a monstrosity or something. When a creature you can see is below one third of its maximum hit points, you can use your Blood Maledict as an action. Wait. <clears throat> the creature you can see Use your blood maledict as an action to attempt to gain control of it. If the creature
A creature you can see is not at its maximum hit points. You can use your Blood Maledict as an action to attempt to gain control of it. This Blood Curse's effectiveness changes based on how damaged the creature is. Creature has. Damn it, I did it again. There we go. Creature has advantage on the save. Yeah. Or it'd be what? 34 to. Damn it, I did it again. <sighs> this blood curse's effectiveness changes based on how different the creature is. 67 to 99%, the creature has advantage on the save. 30 to, uh, 34 to 66%, the creature makes a normal roll. 1 to 33%, the creature makes the save at disadvantage. Creature makes a wisdom saving throw.
On a fail, it is considered under the effects of the Dominate Monster spell. For a number of hours equal to your wisdom modifier. Concentrating on this F. On a fail, it is considered under the effects of the Dominate Monster spell for a number of hours equal to your Wisdom modifier. You are considered concentrating on this effect. The Dominate Monster can only affect multiple at... Oh! Cast a spell at ninth level. Duration of concentration is up to 8 hours. I think that's a pretty good middle ground, because you're... Obviously, unless you have a magic item that boosts your Wisdom up to 22 or higher... You're only going to have control of the thing for five hours. Granted, that's still a very long time in D&D. But I think it's alright for an 18th level skill. You're considered concentrating on this effect. On a fail, this is considered under the effects of the Dominate Monster spell for a number of hours equal to your Wisdom modifier. You are considered concentrating on this effect. Can extend the time of this control by expending further uses of your lewd maledict to capitalize these. Darn it. There you go. What is that? fucking dog doing psycho bitch <clears throat> still have no idea what i'm gonna do with amplify uh, with the amplify of this and i might just make it so that it doesn't amplify because i think uh lichen got another uh blood maledict as it's or not blood maledict Blood Curse as its 18th level thing. I want to see how that worked. Oh, it does have a uh, Amplify. Okay. Paladin, any number of creatures in 30, chilling their blood and stunning them with fear. Any creatures that hear you must succeed a wisdom save or be frightened until the end of the turn. If they fail the saving throw by five or more, they are stunned. Creature that succeeds on the saving throw is immune to the blood curse for the next 24 hours. Amplify. Curse can target any number of creatures within 60 feet of you. Okay. So I do have to figure out an amplify for this. Attempt to bind the dying creature to your will by exploiting its exhaustion. You learn the Blood Curse of Tyranny. Blood Curse of Tyranny. When a creature you can see is not at its maximum hit points, you can use your Blood Maledict as an action to attempt to gain control of it. 
This blood curse is affecting this changes based on how damaged the creature is. 100% blood curse fails automatically. 67 to 99% the creature has advantage on the save. Uh, 34 to 66 the creature makes a normal roll. 1 to 33% the creature makes a save at disadvantage. The creature makes a wisdom saving throw. On a fail, it is considered under the effects of the Dominate Monster spell for a number of hours equal to your Wisdom modifier. You are considered concentrating on this effect. You can extend the time of this control by expending further uses of your Blood Maledict. Somewhere I wanted to go with it. Oh, right, 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 right. A successful save or whenever the the blood curse ends on the creature takes blank d10 for 24 hours. On a successful save, or whenever the blood curse ends on the creature, it takes blank d10. That's how we know it's blank. Blank d10 psychic damage and is immune to the blood curse for 24 hours. Hmm... Is 5d10 too much? 5d10 sounds like a good number. I'm gonna go with 5d10. Takes 5d10 psychic damage and is immune to the blood curse for 24 hours. Yeah, I like 5d10. Let's just keep that. Now, what do we do for the Amplify?
Okay. I think I've got something. If you amplify this blood curse, it takes 3d10 psychic damage before it makes its save. Mm, 3d10 sounds like a lot. 3d8? I'm okay with 3d8. drops into a lower tier <sighs> if it drops into the lower tier the creature rolls That makes sense. When a creature you can see is not at maximum hit points, you can use your blood maledict as an action to attempt to gain control of it. This blood curse's effectiveness changes based on how damaged the creature is. At 100%, the cre um, at 100%, the cre and the curse fails automatically. 67 to 99, the creature has advantage on the save. 34 to 66, the creature makes a new uh, make a normal roll. And 1 to 33% creature makes a save at disadvantage. Creature makes a wisdom saving throw on a fail is considered under the effects of dominate monster for a number of hours equal to your wisdom mod. You are considered concentrating on this effect and can extend the time of its control by expending a further uses of blood maledict. On successful save, or whenever the, cur uh, the blood curse ends on the creature, it takes 5d10 psychic damage and is immune to the blood curse for 24 hours. Amplify the creature takes 3d8 psychic damage before it makes its save. If it drops into a lower tier, the creature rolls with a new modifier. <coughs> if the creature dies... Do I really want to do that? Amplify, the creature takes 3d8 psychic damage before it makes it save. If it drops to a lower tier, the creature rolls with the new modifier. If the creature dies, if the creature dies, the blood maledict is, re is restored. Should it be restored or should it be wasted? I feel like it should be restored. Because it's like... Okay. If the creature dies, the blood maledict... Dies due to this damage. The blood curse is not... Blood maledict is not expended. I think that's pretty okay. Now, if only we could figure out what the flying fuck to do at seven or not seven, fifteenth level. Oh boy. 
die. Inert to the flames, invade the lair, blood curse of rupturing, right of dragon's bane, shatter the scales, blank, and blood curse of tyranny. You get two blood curses for the price of one class, provided you make it to 18th level. <laughs> Fifteenth uh, level is killing me. Uh, Cause you technically already got a way to prevent flight through blood curse of binding. What else is there? Made its lair. Invade its lair. Resist its damage. Break its breath weapon. Hurt it more. Break its armor class. Blank. And dominate. This is fucking torture. How do fifteenth level? Already got methods to prevent its escape. All right, here's a dumb one. You have advantage against any lair actions of the dragon. Although, I'm not entirely 100% sure on how that would work. So, let me get my book real quick. That is PHB. That is no source code. That is dirty, dirty. There's one. Hey, right to the dragon page. Here's a DC. Okay. Lair action of Blue Dragon. This is a DC. DC. As long as there's nothing that's like, a, for some reason, an attack roll. Okay. Fifteenth level, you have advantage on <laughs> on saves versus lair actions. 
I don't fucking know. I may not submit this just because I don't like 15th level. I like everything else so far, but I don't like the 15th level. Ooh. Should I say this? How do I phrase this? While tracking a dragon. I would say this would be relatively hard, although I don't, I would say, I feel like 20 is too high, but it's also potentially too low. I don't know. So we're going to leave it at 20. You can make a DC 20 intelligence check at advantage due to Hunter's Bane. If you suck weed, if you succeed, while tracking a dragon inside its lair, you can make a DC 20 intelligence check at advantage due to Hunter's Bane. If you succeed, you have advantage against. All saves made against the dragon's lair actions. Mad. Made. If you succeed, you have advantage against all saves made against the dragon's lair actions. Eh, no, 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 no. You already have advantage on tracking it, so no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna omit that. What do I call this though? While tracking a dragon inside its lair, you make a DC twenty intelligence check at advantage due to Hunter's Bane. If you succeed, you have advantage against all saves made against the dragon's lair actions. What do we call it? I think I shouldn't have spoke because it was on the tip of my tongue and now it's gone.
Strike any dragon besides Slayer. You can make a DC 20 intelligence check of every image at 100 frames as you succeed. You have advantage against all saves made against the dragon's lair action. We've already got invading the lair. This would be... <laughs> Second home. You know it like it's your own house. Fucking stupid, so no. Need a name for this fucking thing. Tracking a dragon inside a slayer, make an intelligence check at advantage due to Hunter's Pain. If you succeed, you have advantage against all saves made against the dragon's lair actions. How about that? That sounds pretty good to me. Make it not as specific against dragons. That way you're not you're not completely useless against just uh, against everything else. While tracking a creature inside its lair, so at that point you get fey fiends, undead, and dragons. All things commonly, all things that commonly have lair actions. I think. While tracking a creature inside its lair, you can make a DC intelligence at advantage. I would say at advantage if. If Hunter's Bane applies at advantage if hunter's bane applies if you succeed you have advantage against all saves made against the creature's lair actions yeah I'm not going to extend that to the rest of the party. I'm just going to keep it in the Blood Hunter. So. I'm going to click Save Changes. So now we have Inured to the Flames, which allows you to resist common dragon breath types. Invade the Lair. You add dragon to your list of Hunter's Bane targets. Actually, let's look at this the much easier way. Go to creations. Spoilers, you can see what I made. 
here's the bloodletting order that I made before to vampire hunters. Blood hunters of this order hunt dragons so as to prevent the calamity they bring. This is not to say they attack dragons on sight. The order recognizes the existence of good dragons, but are always cautious of them. Invade the lair at third level when you join this order. You may also add dra you may add dragons to the list of creatures included as part of the hunter's bane feature. While in a dragon's lair, you have advantage on stealth checks made to hide from them. I'm going to change that so that it fits more with expert delver. Add dragons to the list of creatures included as part of Hunter's Bane. The list of creatures included as a part of the Hunter's Bane feature. Additionally, while in a Additionally, while in a creature's lair, you can add your If the creature is a dragon, you have advantage on stealth. Uh, you have advantage. You also if the creature is a dragon, you have a, you also have advantage on. Stealth checks. Right. Join this order, add dragons to list of Hunter's Bane feature. While in a creature's lair, you can add your wisdom mod if wisdom modifier to any stealth checks. If the creature is a dragon, you also have advantage on the stealth. You also uh you also have advantage. Uh, if the owner of the lair Okay, join the order, add, list, add dragons to the list. While in a creature's lair, you add wisdom modifier to stealth checks. If the owner of the lair is a dragon, you have advantage. I like it. Pay no mind to the Bard College of Gourmand. It is, it is for lols only. Oh boy. <clears throat> Inured to the flames. When you join this order, you gain resistance to fire, cold, lightning, acid, poison, or radiant damage. 
During the during a short rest, you can change which damage type you resist by reducing your maximum hit points by two. Whenever you finish a long rest, you may choose a new resistance without depleting your maximum hit points. Seventh level, you learn the Blood Curse of Rupturing. Whenever a creature within 60 feet of you attempts to use an internally generated ability such as a breath weapon, poison, roar, or scream, cast a spell with vocal components, or a bodily reaction occur occurs like a Venom Troll's Poison Splash, you can use your reaction to mitigate the damage. The creature must make a con save. On a fail, it takes 2d8 necrotic damage, and the damage from its ability is halved before saving throws occur. On success, they take half damage, and the damage they deal with the ability is only reduced by the necrotic damage dealt. Amplify the curse prevents the use of and ability to recharge the attack for 1d6 turns. Rite of Dragon's Bane. <clears throat> Seventh level, you learn the esoteric rite, Rite of Dragon's Bane. Your right damage is force type. If you hit a dragon creature with your right dragon's bane, uh, with your right of dragon's bane, it suffers additional force damage equal to twice your wisdom modifier. At 11th level, any creature you attack with uh, while the right is active receives wisdom modifier force damage. Shatter the Scales. At 3rd level, you strike with enough force to break a creature's natural armor. When you hit a creature that has natural armor with a weapon, with a weapon attack, and your right of Dragon's Bane is active, you can use your Blood Maledict to have the creature make a con save. Dragons make the save at disadvantage. On a fail, its AC is lowered by 1d6 to a minimum of 10. Expert Delver, while tracking creature inside its lair, you can make a DC 20 intelligence check at advantage if Hunter's Bane applies. If you succeed, you have advantage against all saves made against the creature's lair actions. Finally, at 18th level, you bind a dying creature to your will by exploiting its exhaustion. You learn the Blood Curse of Tyranny. When a creature you can see is not at its maximum hit points, you can use your Blood Maledict as an action to attempt to gain control of it. The Blood Curse's effectiveness changes based on how damaged the creature is. 100% it fails automatically. 99 to 67, the creature has advantage. 66 to 34, creature makes a normal roll. 33 to 1%, the creature has disadvantage on the save. Creature makes a will save. Uh, wisdom. Shit. Makes a wisdom save. On a fail, it is considered under the effects of Dominate Monster for a number of hours equal to your wisdom modifier. And you are considered concentrating on the effect. You can extend the time of the control by expending further uses of Blood Maledict. On a successful save, or whenever the Blood Curse ends on the creature, it takes 5d10 psychic damage and is immune to the Blood Curse for 24 hours. Amplify, the creature takes 3d8 psychic damage before it makes its save. If it drops to a lower tier, the creature rolls with the new modifier. If the creature dies due to the damage, the blood maledict is not expended. Huh. <sighs> that was fun. I'm very glad I'm I'm glad I got through that now. Pay no attention to everything else here. Unless you happen to be in the stream and you actually give a shit and want to see the stuff. Ooh, someone else took Astral Domain. I'm very happy. What is next? The only reason I have not submitted Circle of Runemaker is because it requires a third level... Is because for some reason Druid requires a third level... Thing, which is usually taken up by a spell sl uh, by a spell list. I don't want this thing to have any more spells. I like this the way it is. I don't need spells getting in the way of it. It already gets plenty of them. And it's not like every druid subclass has a spell list or even something at third level, which is what drives me batshit about it. So, for now, until, I don't know, something gets fixed about that, Runemaker is still here. I know it's Runemaker. This son of a bitch has been 
fucking evading me for ever. This was one of the first this was one of the first things that I had an idea for when I started actually making shit in D&D Beyond. Eh. Oath of the Voyage. I think I'm just going to cut here and we'll start working on Oath of Voyage in the next part of the stream. Thank you for watching. If you want to see the VOD of this, or uh, on if you want to see the VOD of this outside of Twitch. Go check out my YouTube channel. It's the same name as here. Rage underscore Eternal. Capital R, capital, capital E. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Bye.